In this lab, we will observe the effects of spherical aberration by measuring and plotting the transverse ray errors and the longitudinal ray errors. By doing this, we can see how changing the lens shape factors help minimize spherical aberration. We will compare our results to theoretical plots obtained by a ZMAX simulation. Spherical aberration is an optical effect observed in an optical device that occurs due to the increased refraction of light rays when they strike a lens near its edge as opposed to its center. The refracted marginal rays will focus closer to the lens than the refracted paraxial rays. The distance between the marginal and paraxial focus is known as the longitudinal aberration. The longitudinal ray errors are measured from paraxial focus and are quadratic with respect to the incident pupil coordinates. The effects of spherical aberration on the transverse rays can be better observed at marginal focus. When the pupil coordinate is at the edge, the transverse ray error is zero, but as the pupil coordinate moves towards the center, the absolute transverse ray error increases then decreases back to zero once the pupil coordinate reaches the center. The transverse ray errors are cubic with respect to the incident pupil coordinates and can be presented with ray fan plots. If the lens is symmetric in geometry and optical properties about the sagittal and tangential axes, the ray errors are equal with respect to the pupil coordinates. Spherical aberration can be corrected by minimizing the ray's amount of refraction at each surface. Spherical aberration is minimized when the refracted angles are equal at each surface. This can be achieved by bending the lens, which is also known as changing the lens's shape factor. Shape factor is a function of the surface curvatures. A negative shape factor corresponds to a plano convex lens and a positive shape factor corresponds to a convex plano lens. For an object at infinity and a lens with an index of 1.5, the shape factor that will make the angle of refraction at each of the surfaces equal, thus minimizing spherical aberration, is roughly 0.7. We align the laser beam to this rail and then put a pen's prism on so that we could deviate the beam by 90 degrees. Uh, we also have it on a translation stage so that we can move across the lens at different pupil positions. We isolated these pupil positions by using a Hartman mask. We then went to one of the extremes of the pupil positions so that we could find the marginal focus. We did this by moving the microscope axially until it was back in the center of the crosshairs. Once there, we scanned across to different pupil positions and moved the microscope um, along the x direction, so perpendicular to the rail. And whatever that distance was, is what we recorded. This gives us the ray fan plot. So now we want to find what the longitudinal ray fan looks like. So we went back to the, the extreme of the Hartman mask, and this time we are moving axially along the axis and measuring the distance that the microscope moves versus the pupil position, and this should give us our longitudinal ray fan. So now we flip the lens in order to get the curved side facing the laser beam, and we took the same measurements to show how shape factor can affect spherical aberration. We expect these uh, values to be much smaller and closer together than for the previous ones. After comparing the measured ray fan and the longitudinal aberration plots to the ZMAX simulation, we observed that when the lens was oriented to minimize the amount of spherical aberration present in the system, our ray fan and error plots closely resembled the ZMAX simulation. When the lens was oriented so that it induced a larger amount of spherical aberration, our results were off from the theoretical plots by a factor of two. This error in measurement could be caused by the microscope objective used to measure the amount of spherical aberration. Since the microscope objective was used to image the marginal focal point, magnification caused by the microscope objective could have exaggerated the lens's already large amount of spherical aberration present. Our results show that spherical aberration was indeed minimized by changing the shape factor of the lens. The transverse and longitudinal aberrations present in the system were minimized by a factor of two. The spherical aberration could be greater minimized by bending the lens so that its shape factor is at a minimum.